Hello friends, this video on plant growth and development part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we spoke about growth, let us talk about differentiation of cells. What do we mean by that? As I explained some time back, like some cells will divide to form new cells. Now only forming new cells is not enough for growth. The cells which are formed, they need to get matured, they need to differentiate, they need to attain a particular shape and size so that they can perform a specific function. And that part is known as differentiation. So it is the process of maturation of cells derived from metastomatic tissues to perform specific functions. Now the per function of metastomatic tissues is to divide, is cell division and formation of new cells. That's it. It will only produce more and more cells. Now those cells need to get matured, they need to perform some specific functions and they need to attain a shape and size according to the functions which they have to perform. So that entire process is called differentiation. So differentiation always follows cell division. Only this, after the cells have been formed, only after the daughter cells have been formed, they will undergo differentiation. So let us take an example. The parenchyma cells, what are they? These are the cells which are formed as a result of cell division. Now these parenchyma cells differentiate. Now the cells, now when cell division happens, whatever cells are formed, they are all similar. They do not differentiate. Okay, this is parenchyma cell which is formed or this is clarenchyma cell which is formed. That is not how it is. So all cells are formed. Now some of them differentiate, they mature in a specific way to form parenchyma cells. Some others differentiate in a different way to form sclerenchyma cells. Now parenchyma cells, their main function is to act as the packing tissue as well as uh, for storage of food. So they have intercellular space amongst themselves so these cells during the process of differentiation they need to attain these kind of a shape so that they are able to perform this function similarly if you talk about the sclerenchyma cells they are mainly for mechanical support so they should have thick rigid walls so some daughter cells which were formed some of them should adapt themselves or some of them should mature themselves in this way that they attain this kind of a structure like sclerenchyma cells and that is how uh, they can perform their assigned function. If you talk about the xylem and the phloem, the xylem vessels which you have tracheids, vessels or xylem parenchyma, just look at all of them. They are all cells, right? But they do not look similar. If you look at the xylem parenchyma cells, if you compare them with the vessel cells, they look so different, right? Again, when you compare them with the sclerenchyma cells, they all look different. However, they all are cells. They all are formed by the process of cell division. So process of cell division will just form new cells. That's it. Then the cells need to mature themselves. They need to attain a fixed shape depending upon the specific function which they want to perform. So this process is known as differentiation. So here on the screen, I have given you so many different types of cells and all of them have different structure, different function and all these different structure and function comes as a result of differentiation. So this process is differentiation. Now there is another term called de-differentiation. Okay. With the term itself, it looks as if it is going to be more complex than differentiation because you have a D added to differentiation. Okay, let us see what it is. It is a process by which fully differentiated living cells regain the capacity to divide under certain conditions. Okay. Now sometimes it has been observed that some cells which have differentiated completely. So they are all mature cells now. They are performing a specific function. They have a permanent shape and size of their own. But those cells suddenly they again gain that capacity to divide. So they again start to divide. So that process is known as de-differentiation. That means the cells which has already differentiated, they are going to produce more cells now. So the process is called de-differentiation. So on top of differentiation, they are dividing. So divide on top of differentiation. So let us take the most appropriate example for this case would be the parenchyma cells. Now the parenchyma cells which are present, they are all, they are fully differentiated cells, right? 
they have they are like they have attained their shape structure they have intercellular spaces they are large cells with thin walls they are acting as storage tissue they also act as packing tissue so they are fully differentiated now suddenly under certain conditions these cells start dividing again and they form new cells which later form cambium that is the lateral meristem i was talking about two types of cambium right the vascular cambium and the cord cambium so they are, they all represent secondary growth so secondary growth in plant does not happen at the initial stages of their life it happens only after only around when they attain maturity so these parenchyma cells that time again start to divide to form new cells and those new cells which will later form cambium so the formation of cambium is an example of de differentiation right so this happens this process happens during the secondary growth of plants so if you remember the structure of the cambium this is how it looks like so here if you see the, this is your cord cambium and this is your vascular cambium so this layer is the vascular cambium vascular cambium is formed between xylem and phloem and this dark colored band is your cord cambium so these two layers of cells are formed later and they are formed from fully differentiated parenchyma cells and formation of these two layers results in the secondary growth of plants which in turn increases the thickness of the plants right so this process is de differentiation now again there is another term called re differentiation so what is re differentiation now what is the meaning of whenever you have a re what does that means this is regain regain means to gain again for example when you say uh, revisit that means to visit a place once again so re differentiation means to differentiate again so what happens in this case is now in the previous slide i told you that there are some cells which will de differentiate to form new cells for example the parenchyma cells will de differentiate to form new cells what will happen to those new cells those new cells will again differentiate so that means they are actually re really differentiating so they will differentiate to form the cambium because they want to perform specific functions so they will again re differentiate to form specific functions like to become the you know, vascular cambium and the cord cambium and then they will give rise to the secondary xylem and the secondary phloem again the cord cambium will give rise to the cord outside and the parenchyma cells inside so that process is known as re differentiation so the example would be the cambium tissues divide and produce cells which differentiate to perform functions for example so here if you look at it the parenchyma cells they got fully differentiated they de differentiated to form the cambium that is new cells were formed which later formed the cambium what will this cambium do how will it cause secondary growth by formation of secondary xylem and secondary phloem right so this vascular cambium will later form secondary xylem and secondary phloem similarly this cord cambium will later form the cord which is also known as the phloem outside and it will form the phloderm that is a layer of cells towards the inside right and these are phloderm is nothing but the parenchyma cells and cork is nothing but what we see as bark of the tree so these cells are formed again now so now this process is known as re differentiation so the process by which cells formed from de differentiated cells divide and differentiate further to perform specific functions so this is known as re differentiation so let us have a quick revision of whatever we have studied so far so the story started with cell division suppose if you have one cell that cell will divide to form new cells now these cells will differentiate to attain a fixed shape and size and perform a specific function now once they are fully matured and fully differentiated sometimes they again get gain the capacity to divide again for example the parenchyma cells they get the capacity of dividing again so they will divide again and that is called de differentiation
So for example, the parenchyma cells will divide again to form cambium. Now this cambium will further divide to form cells which will again differentiate to form xylem and phloem because xylem and phloem again will have different structures. So whatever cells will be newly formed by cambium, some of them will differentiate to form xylem, some of them will differentiate to form phloem. So that process is known as differ redifferentiation. So I hope the concept of differentiation, de-differentiation and re-differentiation is clear to you. If not, please rewind the video and see it again. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.